Um, Sarah, uh, Sarah Brown and I did uh, Cyrano de Bergerac together at uh, the Knightsbridge Theater in L.A. And uh, we were doing the show, and this was actually after the, the understudy had taken over. And um, we were doing the show, and there was this, this um, kind of canopy-type thing that, that, you know, uh, stood up around this little thing, and I was supposed to come down and sit by this bench and have this little moment, and, you know, have this little flirtatious moment or whatever that I was supposed to mess around. And this thing fell down. On, on on stage you. while we're in the middle of the show and so we totally had to vamp and play it off and I just made up some lines and and that was pretty embarrassing it ended up being like the best night of the whole show because it was just okay. funny and off the cuff okay. but that was pretty embarrassing uh, yes. you have one? mine is probably uh, I had a scene where I was supposed to be in a hospital gown I was just telling these guys earlier and uh, I had fastened the hospital gown earlier in the day everything was fine and then I had to sit around for about two hours so I, when I went up to the set, I was actually walking around for about 10 minutes without knowing that it was actually completely open in the back. And I was flashing everybody on, on the set, and no one bothered to tell me so. It was extremely embarrassing when they finally did. Now, nobody had any intention of telling you. <laughs> exactly. And this group, I doubt it. Tyler. My turn. <laughs> Only because I love you will I tell you this story, okay? okay? okay. So, I'm doing, uh, I can't believe I'm going to tell you this story. <laughs> it's, it's too good to tell, so I'm, who, who gives a crap? Here we go. So I'm doing a play in, in Los Angeles, and I'm on stage, and I'm, and, uh, I'm in this really dramatic scene. It's a small 50-seat theater, uh, and so I'm on stage, and all right, here we go. So I'm doing, I'm doing the scene, I'm giving this very dramatic, at least I think it was, a performance, and I see these... People are chuckling in the front row, and just their shoulders are going up and down. And I go off stage, and I, I'm just sitting there by myself, and I'm thinking, what, why, what about what I just said was so funny? And then I look down, my fly is open. No big deal, no big deal, right? If you were wearing any underwear. I just wish somebody in the front row would have just said, want just time out, time out, hey bud, yeah. Yeah. put it away. <laughs> yeah, it was pretty, it was pretty embarrassing. I have been in that theater. <laughs> oh, let your mind run with that one. <laughs> Please Great. don't. Well, mine just happened. Yes. Um, you know, mine just happened a few minutes ago. Uh, I, I'm so dedicated to, to meeting and greeting and hugging every each and every one of you. And so, to be save it and get right to the point, I just put the crap out of my pants. <laughs> That's what it takes to be professional, all right? Just let it all hang out. So, if I cross my legs, I'm not funny. I'm just protecting you. <laughs> think of, uh, actually there were quite a few because when I first started in New York, um, I started on a, on a soap and it was live television. You got your pants. Oh, well, all right. <laughs> okay. You might notice something right here if you can see. Um, you know, Winona Ryder has made her entrance. We have a new Winona in the group. She's on to her hospital. Security. <laughs> what I love is all the bells and whistles went off in the store, and this bozo just kept going. I, I didn't it was know. late. I didn't it's a fad. <laughs> Who knew? Right. Hey, Linda. Yes. I have to. I have to tell this other one little story. Okay. And, and the reason I need to tell this is because my two boys are here in the audience with me. Now, my big boy, who is now a big boy, you need to, Christopher, you need to stand up for one minute. This is my son, Christopher. Well, when, when Christopher was 12 years old, he was on General Hospital playing a copy boy in an editor's room. And the story at the time, Lucy Coe was my mistress. And they had taken, someone had 
had sneaked, snuck in, sneaked in, and taken pictures of Lucy and I, and there was just a sheet draped over us, and I'm telling you, it looked like we were stark naked, that we were just as nude as the day we were born. And the whole storyline was that they were going to publish it in the newspaper, and he was supposed to bring the picture to the editor. And on a five-minute break, he comes up to me, shows me the picture of me and Lynn Herring, and he says, does mom know about this? Okay. I have Kiri from Buena Park, who has a question for everyone up there. Um, I was wondering if before you were on General Hospital, if you ever watched it, like when you came home from work or anything, or school? Did any of you? My mom uh, was huge, is a huge fan, so, you know, I, I always tell everybody, you know, I've made it. I could work with Mel Gibson or Tom Cruise or whoever, it doesn't matter, I've worked on General Hospital. I've worked with Stuart Damon and Leslie Charleston, you know, I was like, I've worked with the big wigs, so, so, you know, when I was home, you know, like, we didn't go travel somewhere for spring break, you know, you're sitting eating your little sandwich, you know, waiting, you know, about to go to the pool or whatever, mom's watching the show and you watch it, and it's, it's funny, though, because I always said if I ever did a soap opera that I would want to do General Hospital, so, you know, God bless, God bless you. Uh, General Hospital, uh, me and Leslie, we're finishing up our 26th year on General Hospital. Yeah. Uh, they just celebrated their 40th anniversary. That's an amazing thing. Um, did you watch it, either one of you? Well, actually, I, I had never seen General Hospital, and the producer at that time had produced uh, a show I had done in New York, Love is a Many Splendor Thing. And he called me out here, and he said would I come over and talk to him about taking over the part of Monica. I had no idea what a Monica was <laughs> at that time. And I did. It was um, it was a harrowing experience because the first day there was a strike going on, and we had uh, secretaries doing our makeup and hair. We had the producers pushing the camera, yeah. and nobody liked me <laughs> at all because they had they had let the other gal go rather rudely. I gathered so it was trial by fire. And I spent the first two months desperately wanting to know what a Monica was. I think I'm getting close, but I'm not quite there yet. Um, I had lived in England for 12 years, and when I returned from England in uh, July of 1977, I was just trying to get a job, and in, on September 13th, not that I remember exactly what happened. No, on September 13th, 1977 was the first day I was on General Hospital. I had never seen a soap opera. I, I auditioned with him. him. Okay. Yeah, she auditioned with me. I did. I, but obviously I it was a job, failure the first time because they made me do it again. <laughs> I wasn't quite sure I liked it. <laughs> <laughs> now, let me see. How about you, Tyler? Did you? Oh, did I ever? Not, not by my choice. 